Hey everyone, it's John from Ride Upstate, and I want to take a little bit of time to talk to you about how you can save fuel when you're out doing ride share or delivery. Now, this is going to apply really to any platform because it has more to do with your vehicle and driving than it has to do with taking orders and things like that. So, I'm taking this from a practice called hypermiling. If you don't know what hypermiling is, it's when you drive a certain way in order to get the highest fuel mileage possible. It's why some people who own Priuses can get like 100 miles per gallon. Now, I'm not talking about doing anything extreme like that, like damming up your air ducts and creating custom wheel covers or anything like that, or generally driving like an idiot on the road, but I think some of these tips will help you out. Now, the first thing that I recommend that you do, and this is gonna give you the most savings, is slow down. That's right, slow down and drive smoothly. It's been estimated that for every five miles per hour that you drive above 60, you're actually burning 20 cents more per mile than you would if you're uh, driving at a reasonable rate. Slowing down is very important because the faster you go, the more air your vehicle has to move, the more resistance that you have, and it's going to just cause a higher fuel consumption because it takes more energy to push that vehicle. So if you're one of those people who likes to speed down the road, slow down, take it easy. Also gradual starts and stops will also help you with your fuel mileage. If you're doing what they call jackrabbiting, which is you're jumping on the gas and braking hard when you get to a stoplight or something like that, you're wasting the kinetic energy that you've generated by driving and you're accelerating way too fast. So drive slower and drive smoothly if you want to save fuel mileage. That's where the most fuel savings are gonna come from. The next thing that you want to do is make sure that your tire pressures are at what is recommended on your vehicle. If you open the driver's side door and you look in that door sill there, there'll be a sticker. I'll put a picture of an example of one right up here. That sticker will tell you what your tire should be inflated to. Stop at a gas station um, and check your tire pressures. At least once a month, I do it weekly myself, and I'll give you a little bit of a hint. If you don't mind the rough ride, you can inflate it just a little bit more than it actually says it should. The ride will be a little bit rougher, but typically you'll have less rolling resistance if it's three to five pounds higher inflated. It's very important. You can go to Walmart or any auto parts store and find a tire gauge so that you can check your tire pressures before you even leave the house in the morning. And if they're more than five pounds below what they should be, go and get them aired up. Okay, the third thing you're gonna to want to do is change your filters. The first one being the engine air filter and the second one being the cabin air filter. You wanna change the engine air filter, especially if you have an older vehicle. Older vehicles, if they're starved for oxygen, will burn more fuel. Newer ones, not so much. They just won't accelerate uh, normally, but it still helps because then the engine management isn't kicking in as much. The computer isn't compensating for the lack of air that's coming into the vehicle. You wanna change the cabin air filter if your vehicle is equipped with one, and you can check that in your owner's manual. They're usually located inside the glove box. Change that cabin air filter because if you're running air conditioning, and that air filter is clogged up, it's gonna cause the AC to cycle more often. And AC, as you know, uses up horsepower from your vehicle, and that's going to affect your fuel mileage. Most people don't think about the cabin air filter when they're thinking about increasing fuel mileage, but that is one of the things that will help you out a lot too. The fourth thing that you wanna make sure that you're not doing is carrying around a bunch of junk in your trunk. Um, if you're carrying around a bunch of stuff, boxes and a, a bunch of garbage and a bunch of heavy items, adding weight to the vehicle is going to decrease the fuel mileage. If you're a ride share driver, you've probably noticed this. If you're carrying, if you're doing rides 
with lots of passengers over a span of time, you'll notice that your fuel mileage drops. It's because the extra weight takes extra fuel to get the vehicle going. Also, if you've got a roof rack or a bicycle rack or any kind of rack that you're carrying extra stuff in, get that thing off of your vehicle unless you actually need it. I know it's a pain to take it on and off the vehicle, but especially some of those luggage racks that are on top, um, if you're hauling bicycles around, those things will decrease your fuel mileage. I know a lot of us do this part-time, and so we may not want to take our bike off the vehicle or something like that, but in reality, you're hurting your fuel mileage by always driving around with stuff in the trunk of your vehicle or stuff attached to the top or back of your vehicle. Finally, try not to idle your vehicle. When you idle your vehicle, you're burning fuel for no reason. So you want to try and reduce idling as much as possible. So when you go in to pick up a delivery, shut your vehicle off and lock it. Because if you're in there for 10 or 15 minutes, you're burning fuel that whole time if you leave your vehicle idling. I know a lot of people, especially in, in colder climates, may lock their vehicle and leave it idling so their vehicle stays warm. But 10, 10 to 15 minutes of that, if you're stuck in a restaurant, can really be a problem. That also means, if at all possible, avoid drive throughs because you're going to be idling a lot sitting at a drive through If you get in a situation where you find like you're going to have to be idling a vehicle, you're going to be sitting for a while, like you're stuck at a railroad crossing, just shut the vehicle off. You're not going anywhere, and it only takes a few more seconds to restart your vehicle. Okay, so once again, those five things are drive slower and smoother, check your tire pressures, check your cabin and your air engine air filters, make sure you're not idling your vehicle, and get rid of that junk in your trunk because you're just hauling it around. I think if you do these things, you can improve your fuel mileage greatly. You'll see an improvement, especially, like I said, the slower and smoother driving. My name is John from Ride Upstate, reminding you that just because gas prices are extremely high and you're in a small market, you don't need to settle for small profits. Bye.